Dear Warriors of Light and Darkness, since my recent content focused more on the endgame or steps that at least require to have access to Shadowbringers, I want to go back in time with all the people that are making their first steps into Final Fantasy XIV. And that means we will cover everything you need to know from the point of quitting World of Warcraft or at least putting the Battle.net aside, laying down your guns in Counter-Strike or leaving the top lane in League of Legends, to the point where you have access to all the content that my previous guides are aiming at. I will put timestamps into the description and as a comment, so that you can navigate at the point at which you find yourself at the moment. Ok, let us start with the very beginning of it all. If you're not certain if you want to pull all your heart into Final Fantasy XIV, you can easily go to the website and check out the free trial that lets you play for free until you reach level 35, which is quite a bunch of content and already some epic moments in its plot. Of course, you will have some restrictions through the free trial version, but I think when you reach the point that you need something that is restricted, your decision should lead you into the standard version. But before entering the endless cycle of monthly subscription, Square offers a fantastic solution with its complete edition, packing the base game and each expansion plus a 30 day subscription together into one deal. An amazing bargain with the only requirement that you haven't bought the base game or more in the past and registered your account to it. The link can be found in the description, but you can also google and compare the prices for it on different websites. If you make that decision at level 30 or higher, get the complete edition. Because buying the base game only won't show the full value of this amazing game, peaking its quality in Shadowbringers. Ok, all the bureaucracy solved, lock yourself into the game, choose the data center or realm your friends are playing at or that have a familiar Final Fantasy name. Other than in WoW, interaction with other people is limited to data centers. You can hop from realm to realm inside these centers, but not to another data center at least for now until they release a cross data center feature at some day. And due to these limitations, a small tip from me. If you want to ultimately play with a friend on a specific server and the character creation says you cannot create more characters on that server, this limitation is bound to the actual time at when you're trying it. Just wait until late night or early morning hours and try it again. Coming to the character creation, here you can customize your character Maybe not with a variation like in other games, but at least way better than what Azeroth has to offer. Especially when the characters really look great and fit perfectly into the setting, the world and you have access to thousands of glamour sets later on. Attention here, all the settings affecting your physical appearance cannot be changed in game. Only hairstyle, hair color, tattoos, lip color, facial features and face paint. So choose wisely when configuring your character. The good news are that you will receive an item called Fantasia, once per character, that is an in-game currency which can be used to change the appearance of your character once. Of course, you can also buy those from the Mogri station. After choosing race, birth and your patron, which don't affect anything inside the game, we continue to another very important thing. The job or class selection. Each job inside Final Fantasy XIV has a basic class that will turn into the advanced job at level 30 by doing the associated job quest. So because many people have asked me about which class they need to start to become a summoner for example, let me cover shortly the job and class connections. When it comes to physical disciples, the gladiator becomes a paladin at 30, the pugilist a monk, the marauder a warrior, the lancer becomes dragoon of course and archer will turn into a bard. For disciples of magic, things are a bit more complicated. The conjurer is our dear white mage, while the thaumaturge becomes black mage. But the arcanist can become scholar, the healing job or summoner, the magical dps job, that are both leveled by leveling one of the chosen jobs. Above that, the choice you make here defines the starting location and the starting city state that defines the beginning of your journey. But don't worry. At about level 17 to 20, these faction wise separations will be channeled again and you can freely choose your grand company and city alienation, so better you should choose the desired class instead of starting location. But now comes the best thing about job selection in Final Fantasy XIV. Each job can be unlocked and played on a single character at level 10. 
That means if you already leveled the gladiator to level 30, becoming a paladin, you can also level up another job and if you made the starting quest, switching your gear set and mainly the weapon is the only thing you need to do. Above that, every job or class you start after your main job that has its level below your highest job will have an increased experience gain. But as you may know already, some jobs are locked to further expansions. The ninja can be unlocked in Limsa at level 10 by choosing the rogue. Dark Knight, Astrologian and Mechanist start at level 30 when you have access to Ishgard in Heavensward and you have reached level 50 with your main job. Red Mage and Samurai are Stormblood jobs starting at level 50, while Gunbreaker and Dancer require access to Shadowbringers, both starting at level 60. And also note that in Final Fantasy XIV there are no specs for specific jobs. The job you play defines the role, for example a Dragoon will always be a DPS job, while Warrior will always be a tank. Check out one of the many info websites if you are not certain about a specific job you want to play or ask me inside the comment section. Ok, we made our choice. For example you go like, hey Des is hyping the summoner. Then I will go and create an Arcanist, looking like his character with the same name. That means you will start in Limsa Lominsa after an introductory cutscene. That mentioned, Final Fantasy XIV is heavily cutscene based and has an insane plotline without any competition on the MMO sector. I highly recommend you to watch those cutscenes. But I know there are different playstyles and reasons what to do in a game like this. If you want to go fast for endgame and cannot stand multiple hours of story driven quests and conversations, at least watch those cutscenes with voiced audio and cinematic camera movements. And yes, if you cannot stand a single form of story and plot progression, skip every cutscene and head further. But in any case, don't buy that skip potion, because it will throw you into content you are completely lost in, when not getting introduced to essential game mechanics and the overall Final Fantasy game language that you will be taught over time through the main scenario quest and its dungeons and trials. Fine, we have reached the shores of the coastal harbor city Limsa, directly being called by an NPC. Follow the dialogue and go to the adventurers guild. Here you will be introduced in manner and environments of that beautiful city state and after the conversation you can see this icon being the signal for MSQ, the main scenario quest. At that point things are getting a bit simpler when walking the path to the end game without crafting, making amends on the market board or finding yourself off the path by doing old relic weapons. Don't do relic weapons before end game, trust me. If you like, I will cover these things in a spin off video. Ok, now I will tell you the same sentence I tell all my friends when they get into Final Fantasy XIV. If you want to see the end game as fast as possible, do the main scenario quest and keep the level of the job you want first a bit beyond the required MSQ level. That means, if your MSQ is level 25 for example, you should find methods to get your level a bit beyond by participating in dungeons that are unlocked at level 15 as well as the most important daily roulette, leveling, found under your duty tab. And while striving through the errors, fates are a nice feature to get your level up further as well as your beast lock. But that is only good for the first levels and can be used by killing specific enemies bound to the starting area of your job choice. But of course, the MSQ will automatically bring you further in that progression and don't worry, it is not all about maximizing your XP. That is only important when playing alt jobs or while grinding up two prime jobs at the same time. And if you really run into the situation of being underleveled for the MSQ, check out my very in detail leveling guides that are divided into specific level ranges. These contain the best fate areas, leaf quests or dungeons for every level until 80. And of course, try to find yourself a free company with either some personal friends or people that share the same game philosophy and can help you getting started. Most of the times people in Final Fantasy XIV are very kind and help others with pleasure, so feel free to use some communication and ask for help when you need it. Above that you can receive a 10% leveling boost from a free company buff. When progressing onwards, from time to time you will unlock certain features of the game mostly highlighted by those blue question marks. Here you can unlock things like riding your chocobo or other mounts at around level 20 or getting his help in combat situations at level 30 or many other features. 
and at level 50 you receive more duty roulette dailies that grant XP as long as you can level a specific job or end game currency at max level. Furthermore, if you thought, what the hell is that combat system? Is it really so slow and sluggish? No, absolutely not. They really created the essence of a complex combat system in Heaven's Ward and optimized or developed that further until Shadowbringers. That means a really sluggish and long global cooldown of 2.5 seconds will be incorporated with OGCDs that work in the space between those weapon skills. Unfortunately, most of these are received in Heaven's Ward content or later, but at least at level 70, each job has access to a fantastic combat system that other games are still failing at tremendously. So never give up too early, my friends. Alright, if you went through all these steps until 50 and already witnessed some intense Final Fantasy moments in the MSQ, you are facing the first post-reborn patches that mark the time span between the prime story of A Realm Reborn and the next expansion Heaven's Ward. This part seems to be a common stumbling stone to many players. The quests seem to somehow operate as gaps filler without granting you XP anymore. But now listen to a longtime fan of the whole Final Fantasy series. They may require patience, but the more you are rewarded with one of the best storylines of the Final Fantasy series in Heaven's Ward and further XP after doing the last Realm Reborn quest. You will know when, don't worry. Keep on fighting my dear warriors of light and dark, it is not far anymore. So get your ether currents through the help of your compass to get access to flying in all Heaven's Ward areas and continue with the main scenario quest. Of course, at level 60 we will have another series of gaps filler quests, but you can do it. They are designed very well and throw off important moments of the whole plotline, especially important for the Shadowbringers plot. So check them out and enjoy their beauty. Also, don't forget to check your equipment upon each step to another expansion, so when reaching level 50, 60 and 70. By using some poetic tombstones or by checking the market board. Then after solving conflict in the near and far east, there will be some gaps filler quests at 70 again. But you can make it. You can see the end by now. Keep on progressing MSQ. Gear your character quite a bit or just wait until you reach the main city in the expansion, where you can buy 380 gear at the vendor. And when you have solved the final puzzles of the prelude in Violet, it is time to venture further into Shadowbringers. Here you can check out my Shadowbringers starting guide or the two leveling guides for either tanking and healer jobs or DPS jobs and make use of the new trust system while of course doing MSQ, getting all the ether currents and having a blast with that insane story plot. Tis done, Heroes of Eorzea. End game is unlocked and you can finally do the glamour stuff, raids or anything you like. Of course, you can also do some crafting and gathering while being on the path, but that is too complex to feature in this guide. I hope that you can find your way into this awesome game. Have some trust in the combat system, persist through the 2.0 post quests hole and unlock endgame by enjoying an epic Final Fantasy story and becoming the hero that this world needs so desperately. Thank you all for watching. And like I mentioned, check out my other guides for specific parts of this game, especially the leveling or the job guides for learning a job's essentials. And if you want to see more Final Fantasy related content, leave a like subscribe to this channel or check out my Twitch channel for live action. And most of all, keep loving Final Fantasy and games in general. See you in the next video and until then, take care. Yet heedless of what lies ahead, he shall press on. Spurred by the promise of peace and prosperity. Amid this period of great change, an adventurer arrives in Eorzea, one whose tale is yet unwritten. May he ever walk in the light of the crystal.